Hello children. Today we discuss 26th June JE mains attempt evening session physics part. Question number one. Dimensional formula for mutual inductance. While finding dimensional formula, let, let us make use of any one of the equations. Energy in an inductor is given by half L I square. So, L implies 2U divided by I square. So, formula for energy, dimensional formula energy U stands for potential energy M L square T raised to minus 2 divided by I square dimensionally A square. So, ML square T raised to minus 2, A raised to minus 2 would be the correct choice. So, correct answer is option C. Self-inductance and mutual inductance both are having same dimensions. So, dimensional formula for self-inductance is equal to mutual inductance. Okay, that formula can be used for establishing the dimensional formula for mutual inductance. Okay, let us see the second question. The arrangement shown in the figure there are four masses connected masses m1 m2 m3 m4 respectively and two pulleys which are movable one pulley which is fixed which one of the relationship between accelerations of each of those masses is correct here the length of the strings length of the strings does not change during when the system accelerates and that is the constraint here. Length of the string is a constant. If you use the constraint relationship popularly used for connected body movement, we can use sigma t dot, sigma t dot a is equal to 0, where t is the tension. In the string connecting any mass and A is the acceleration of that mass. Here, we make use of a convention that the accelerations of all these masses are directed downward. Let us choose the direction of acceleration conventionally. We do not know what is the actual direction, but we take arbitrarily m1, m2, m3, m4, all having different accelerations and in downward direction. Tension in each of the strings will be acting away from each of those masses. Now, let the tension in m4 be t. It's tension in the string connecting the mass m4 be t. Then, Tension in the same string connecting M3 will be also same. So, M3 will have same tension. As two strings support the string connecting M2, the tension in M2, tension in string connecting M2 will be T plus T, 2T. For the same reason here also, 2T. Then applying the same principle, you get 4T here. Again, 4T here. Now, supplying the result. In this case, sigma t dot a, for the first case, tension t and acceleration of a4, applying this product, sigma t dot a, tension and acceleration both are vectors. Tension for m4 is acting upward, that is tension dot a4, Cos of the angle between the two, cos 180, angle between tension and acceleration is 180, so you put cos 180 minus 1 plus next one. What about for M3? M3 also, tension is acting upward, acceleration is downward, so minus T A3. Coming to the mass M2, that will be minus 2 T A2. Coming to the mass M1. That will be minus, again minus. Why minus? Because cos of 180 will be minus 1. Minus 4 t times a1. So, how many accelerations have come? 
A1, A2, A3, A4. How many masses are there? M1, M2, M3, M4. Apply this sigma t dot a for all the masses for their accelerations and tensions completely. Sum over 0. So tension throughout gets cancelled. Then which one of the following is correct? Tension gets cancelled throughout. Then minus a1, minus 2a2, minus a3, minus a4 equal to 0. Multiplying by minus throughout a1, sorry, 4a1 plus 2a2 plus a3 plus a4 equal to 0 though. So, the correct answer would be option a. Next one, third one, arrange the following graphs in descending order of total work done. Where W1, W2, W3, W4 are work done corresponding to the figures A, B, C, D respectively. We know area under force displacement graph gives work done. Let us make use of that here. In the first picture, there are two right triangles. The bottom triangle height F minus F base X0. Let us choose that acceleration, sorry, area, that area to be A0. Area A0. Okay, and due to symmetry, the upper area will be also A0, but upper area plus and lower area minus. Because lower area, force is negative. For second option, similarly, we can mark the area below as minus a0, area above right triangle plus a0 and the other area, rectangle area let us choose as a1. Then applying the same principle that is plus a1. Here minus a0 here plus a0 this one plus a1. Let the last triangle area be plus a2 that is above so plus a2. Okay, we need not measure that area, you just name it, as the only comparison is required. Here, this area, F and X0 area will be plus A0, here X0, X1, X0, X1, that area will be minus A0, and this area, X1, X2 area, that would be, X1, X2 area would be A1, minus A1 is that, and the last one is plus A2 up to X3 referring to this one. Let us choose the total area. Here total area would be 0 because plus A0 minus A0. So that work W1 is 0. Uh, finding out the area in next case plus A0 minus A0 gets cancelled. That only remaining is plus A1. So that W is plus A1. The last one, here also plus A0 minus A0 cancels. Here total will be W3 is equal to A1 plus A2. Here A0 minus A0 cancels. Here total work will be negative minus A1 here and plus A2. That is W4. So the biggest area will be, biggest area will be W3 because that is A1 plus A2. So W3 greater, so answer cannot be C and D, W3 is biggest. Now which is the smallest one, which is minus of A1 plus A2, because that is difference of A1 and A2. Here it is only A1, here it is only 0, here it is only A2, but here it is A2 minus A1, so that is minimum. A2 minus A1 is minimum, so W4 is minimum, so B also cannot be, so correct answer is option A. Next one, a solid sphere is rolling without slipping on a frictionless uh, horizontal plane. Ratio of rotational kinetic energy of the ball to the total kinetic energy. Rotational kinetic energy divided by total kinetic energy. We know the beta factor for solid sphere is 2 by 5. Let us begin from beta factor. I am only telling that easy method. Beta factor is equal to 2 by 5. Now, rotational kinetic energy divided by total kinetic energy, that is equal to, we can choose the right answer from the data beta itself. 
beta or k square by r square k is the radius of gyration for solid sphere is 2 by 5 so rotational by total you can uh, use this numerator divided by numerator plus denominator that is 2 by 2 plus 5 so that answer is 2 by 7 so right answer is option b what is the moment of inertia of the sphere that is 2 by 5 mr square where that coefficient of mr square will be the beta factor 2 by 5 it, if it was a hollow sphere beta factor would have been 2 by 3 then the answer would have been 2 by 2 plus 3 that is 2 by 5 if it was a disc beta factor 1 by 2 then the required answer is 1 by 1 plus 2 that is 1 by 3 so and so you can practice this Next one, given statement questions, move from poles to equator, direction of acceleration due to gravity of earth always points towards center of earth without any variation in its magnitude. The direction of acceleration due to gravity when you move from pole to equator will remain always towards center of earth as the force is central force, but its magnitude does not remain constant. So, the first statement is incorrect. The magnitude when you move from pole to equator, magnitude of acceleration due to gravity from pole to equator decreases. A pole value is greater because the radial distance is less. So, the first statement is false. So, the right choice is on answer D. No other possibility. What about the second statement let us choose? At equator, the direction of acceleration due to gravity towards center of earth. That is also true. Then answer is option D, no need of any further explanation. Then the formula for Reynolds number is asked. That is a knowledge based question. Reynolds number which is used for, Reynolds number which is used for analyzing whether a flow is streamlined or turbulent, fluid flow, streamlined or turbulent, that is decided, that can be decided by knowing the dimensionless quantity Reynolds number which is V rho D by eta where V is the velocity velocity called terminal velocity V is the terminal sorry critical velocity critical velocity is that velocity maximum velocity up to which the flow remains streamlined beyond which the flow becomes a turbulent the rho is the density of the liquid D is the diameter of the pipe eta is viscosity or coefficient of viscosity of that fluid. So, this is Reynolds number r, r equal to v rho d divided by eta. Here, you can also check this answer dimensionally if you do not know this equation readily because no other option satisfy the dimensionless figure. So, the answer is option c. Flask contains argon oxygen in ratio 3 is to 2. Mass uh, and mixer kept at 27 degree Celsius ratio of their average kinetic energy per molecule. Average kinetic energy per molecule. Average kinetic energy per molecule is equal to formula number of degrees of freedom. Number of degrees of freedom into half kbt. Number of degrees of freedom into half kbt. Flask contains argon and oxygen. Ratio of their average kinetic energy per molecule. That uh, per degrees of freedom. That would have been meant. Energy per molecule per degree of freedom. That only depends on temperature. Then we answer this one. Energy per number of molecules per degrees of freedom is going to be half kbt where kb is the Boltzmann constant it only depends on temperature that does not depend on the mass mass is different so energy per degree of freedom is the required answer so the correct answer only depends on temperature temperature remains same for both so answer should be d because the number of degrees of freedoms are not same for argon and oxygen Argon is monatomic, oxygen is diatomic. Suppose argon number of degrees of freedom is 3 and that for oxygen the degrees of freedom is 5. Such an option is not there. So, per degree of freedom is asked. 
then next one eighth one charge on capacitor of capacitance 15 microfarad which is shown in the middle in the figure given below in such questions we know they are in series in series charge is to be same so total charge in the system is equal to charge on each of those capacitors so charge on each of that capacitors same so charge on 15 10 or 20 whatever remaining same that is equal to the total charge in the system that is equal to the charge delivered by the battery okay so for finding that easiest method is to find the total capacity of the system three capacitors in series total capacity equivalent capacity we know c1 c2 c3 divided by c1 c2 plus c1 c3 plus c2 c3 making that idea 10 15 20 you multiply 15 into 15 into 10 into 20 all units of microfarad divided by c1 c2 that is 15 into 10 15 into 10 plus 15 into 20 plus 20 into 10 so we may write c equivalent as 15 10 20 divided by 150 plus uh, 200 200 plus 150 that is uh, 350 plus 300 that is you get 650 so this gets cancelled now this one you can cancel 13 that is 3 into 2 6 60 divided by 30 is the equivalent capacity now charge q total is equal to c total or c equivalent into the supplied voltage c equivalent is 60 by 30 multiplied by supplied voltage is 30 so 13 gets cancelled so the answer is 60 micro coulomb next one ninth one again about capacitor regarding the capacity of a parallel plate capacitor the area a distance of separation 2 meter 4 microfarad is the capacity the new capacitance of the system if half of the space is filled with the dielectric material of constant 3 general formula for capacity c is equal to epsilon 0 a divided by d minus t plus t by epsilon r let us substitute c as epsilon 0 a by before that let us make another equation epsilon 0 a by d into d taken common in denominator 1 minus t by d plus t by d times epsilon r okay here c equal to epsilon 0 a by d value is given how much is that 4 microfarad divided by 1 minus t by d only half of the space is filled so t by d t is the thickness of the dielectric slab t is the thickness of the dielectric slab t by d is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 times epsilon r is given 3 here equals 4 by 1 minus 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 that can be written as 4 divided by 1 by 6 plus 3 by 6 that is 4 times 6 divided by 4 so that answer is 6 microfarad option c 64 conducting drops each radius 0 0.02 meter carrying charge 5 micro coulomb are combined to form a bigger drop ratio of surface charge density surface density uh, ratio of surface density of bigger drop to smaller drop that should be the surface charge density here we have learned that while combining several droplets each of radius r and if there are n number radius of the single drop is equal to n raised to 1 by 3 times the radius of the smaller drop by using volume conservation total volume is constant r is equal to n raised to 1 by 3 times r now charge conservation total charge on the bigger drop is equal to n times charge on each of those droplets 
you can make use of all this surface charge density ratio so surface charge density o bigger one divided by surface charge density o smaller one that is equal to surface charge density of bigger one is surface charge density is charge divided by surface area that charge is total q big q divided by surface area 4 pi capital r square where capital r is the radius of the big sphere okay divided by surface charge density of small one small one having charge small q small one having area 4 pi into small r square 4 pi gets cancelled that is qr square by qr square now substituting q as nq so nq r square divided by r square r square can be written as r square can be written as n raised to 2 by 3 times r square that is n raised to 2 by 3 times r square then q q gets cancelled r square gets cancelled n raised to 1 minus 2 by 3 that is equal to n raised to 1 by 3 n is given how much 64 so 64 raised to 1 by 3 that is 4 cube raised to 1 by 3 so that answer is 4 so correct answer is option b 11th one equivalent resistance between a and b in the given network see the network it is easily reduced from the farther side this 5 and this 5 these two are in series 5 and 5 series 10 that 10 and this 10 are in parallel 10 and 10 parallel half 5 repeating that module 5 5 10 10 10 5 5 5 10 10 10 5 again 5 5 10 10 10 5 so the correct answer is option c 12th one a bar magnet having magnetic moment 2 into 10 power 5 joule per tesla being placed along direction of uniform magnetic field of magnitude 14 power 10 power minus 5 tesla work done in rotating the magnet slowly through 60 degree it's clear given the magnet is placed in magnetic uh, meridian that means magnetic moment of the magnet is directed along external magnetic field that means the potential energy is minimum torque is zero that is in stable equilibrium in stable equilibrium the value of theta between moment and field is zero and turn to 60 degree between moment and field so work done formula can be used mb times cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 mb m 2 into 10 power 5 b 14 into 10 power minus 5 calculation is easy cos 0, 0 is 1 cos 60 is 1 by 2 so 28 divided by 2 14 so correct answer should be apple 13 1 two coils of inductances l1 and l2 connected in series combination having mutual inductance of the coil as m equivalent self inductance of the combination is here currents are flowing in opposite sense even though the coils are connected in series two coils are connected in series because they are carrying same currents but the sense of currents in each of the coils is opposite the first left coil current is towards right right coil current is towards left okay let us write down the voltage across the first coil due to self-induction. Self-induction brings about the voltage minus L di by dt, minus L1 di by dt in the first coil, where L1 is the self-inductance of first coil and L2 is that of second coil. We know currents are same in each of the coil at each instant. Currents are same in each. Also, rate at which current changes also will be same in each. That's why I'm not writing di1 by dt or di2 by dt. di1 by dt equals di2 by dt as they are in series. So, minus L1 di by dt. Minus L1 di by dt minus L2 di2 by dt will be the induced voltage due to self-induction in the second coil. But it is given that the pair of coil 
there is no flux leakage assuming there is no flux leakage there is coupling between the two fields then the next one voltage due to mutual induction current flowing through the rate of change of current through the first coil brings about a voltage in the second coil but the currents in first coil and second coil are in opposite sense that's why it will be m di divided by dt m1 is the mutual inductance of first coil due to second coil then m into di by dt mutual inductance of first coil with respect to second coil multiplied by change in current in second coil per time but we apply reciprocity theorem where m12 equals m21 assuming no flux leakage for no for no flux leakage apparently one coil should be wound upon the other but it is not not like that but no other options in choice right choice cannot be there that's why we choose reciprocity theorem m12 equal to m21 mutual inductances uh, are same next one also again m di divided by dt this will be the total voltage and that is equal to we can replace each of these coils and we can keep only one single coil then the formula will be minus l equivalent into di by dt if a single coil replacing both this coil is there then the total voltage should be same as that minus l equivalent di by dt di by dt same as they are in series so that answer is l equivalent equal to l1 plus l2 minus 2m so the right choice is option d 40 metallic conductor length 1 meter rotates in vertical uh, plane parallel east west direction about one of the end with angular speed 5 radian per second horizontal component of earth's magnetic field is given induce dmf we know earth's magnetic field is directed from magnetic south pole of earth to magnetic north pole of earth magnetic south pole of earth is the pole towards which south pole of freely suspended magnet points magnetic north pole of earth is the pole towards which north pole of freely suspended magnet points okay so that magnetic field horizontal component is parallel to the surface and the rod is rotating in a vertical plane so that induced motional emf is to be maximum in each of that uh, concepts induced the concept of induced emf and also concept of motional emf we'll get the right answer and that is an solved exercise in NCRT. That formula for induced voltage is equal to half B L square omega conductor of length L rotated with constant angular speed omega in a perpendicular magnetic field. So substituting half into 0 0.2 into 10 power minus 4 into L square. L is 1 meter. Omega is 5 radian per second. So the answer is let us find out this one is 10 power minus uh, 5 into 5 so 5 into 10 power minus 5 right how b l square omega that's right so this point 1 comes then 10 power minus 5 into 5 that is 5 into 10 power minus 5 volt so the right answer should be option B, 50 microvolt. The right answer is option B, 50 microvolt. Next one, which of the correct order of wavelengths? We know by watching into this, gamma radiation is there. So gamma radiation is the shortest wave. Shortest wavelength is for gamma radiation. So, gamma radiation should be shortest. So, correct answer should be option B. No other choice. Microwave among all is having greater wavelength. So, the correct choice is option B. For specific wavelength, 670 nanometer of light from galaxy moving with velocity V, the observed wavelength is given. The value of V is. Value of V. 
we know for doppler shift in light formula for doppler shift delta nu by nu is equal to v radial divided by c with a minus sign this ncrt formula we have learned for doppler effect that can be written as plus that can be written as plus delta lambda divided by lambda plus delta lambda divided by lambda that is delta lambda change in wavelength doppler shift 670 and 670.7 that is 0.7 divided by true wavelength 670 that's equal to v radial divided by c that i multiply here 3 into 10 power a so on calculating this will be the right answer answer is option c you can calculate and get the answer c 17. Metal surface illuminated by radiation 4500 angstrom. The rejected photoelectron, ejected photoelectron enters into a constant magnetic field of 2 milli tesla, making 90 degree with the magnetic field. So, you know, the magnetic force on that electron is to be maximum. It starts revolving. You know, whenever a charge is entering a magnetic field perpendicularly, it goes in a circular path radius 2 millimeter then work function of that metal we know from einstein's photoelectric equation incident energy that is hc by lambda minus work function minus work function is equal to maximum kinetic energy here work function is asked so work function is equal to incident energy hc by lambda lambda is given Lambda is given 4500 angstrom. We can convert 4500 angstrom to electron volt by using that shortcut we have used many where. 12400 divided by 4500. 4500. This you get that much electron volt. So 124 divided by 45. This is close to 2.75 electron volt. So, incident energy of the radiation is 2.75 electron volt minus maximum kinetic energy. Formula for maximum kinetic energy. Formula for kinetic energy of a charge moving in magnetic field is Q square, B square, R square divided by 2M. But on calculating all this value substituting in SI, we get that in joule but here we need in electron volt and q stands for charge on electron see this q stands for charge on electron for converting joule into electron volt you divide by charge on electron so it's the best method to delete one e from calculations that you get 2.75 minus charge on electron 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 into b square b2 milli tesla that you get 4 into 10 power minus 6 radius 2 millimeter 4 into 10 power minus 6 don't forget to square divided by 2 times mass on electron 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 okay now let us uh, solve for powers. This is 19 plus 6, 25. 25 plus 6 is 31. That is minus 31. So, all these powers get cancelled. All these powers get cancelled. Okay. Now, this one you can cancel like this. Then approximately... 61.6 into 2 into 4 divided by 9.1 only left and that on calculation you can find out the answer to be 1.36 2.75 minus no other options possible here plus chances are 1.36 and 1.69 this one on calculating you can approximately get 1.36 so the right answer is option a Radioactive nucleus can decay by two different processes. Half life of first process is given 3 hours. Second process 4.5 hours for the second process. Effective half life period. 
dk constant lambda for first process is equal first process lambda 1 plus dk constant of second process is lambda 2 and lambda is the total dk constant dk constant means rate of disintegrations activity from dk law is equal to lambda times n so dk constant lambda is equal to activity divided by n at that instant so dk constant is the activity per number so activity per number is lambda 1 lambda 1 is the dk constant for the rate rate of disintegration for the first process second one rate of disintegration for the second one lambda 1 can be written as 0 0.693 divided by t half for first one half life relation between dk constant and half life is 0 0.693 by t plus 0 0.693 by t2 that is equal to 0 0.693 divided by t 0 0.693 gets cancelled so 1 by t equals 1 by t1 plus 1 by t2 so effective half life is equal to t1 t2 divided by t1 plus t2 that is 3 into 4.5 4.5 can be written as 9 by 2 divided by 3 plus 9 by 2 3 plus 9 by 2 that is 15 by 2 2 gets cancelled you get uh, 15 and 3 gets cancelled 5 comes 9 by 5 9 by 5 uh, will be the answer so answer is option d so 18 answer is option d 19th one positive feedback is required by an amplifier to act an oscillator feedback feedback means feeding back a portion of output into input for sustained oscillations feeding back a portion of output into input is called feedback oscillator needs a positive feedback that means the, there is no phase difference between the portion of output fed back into the input. Input and output portion will be in phase. But an amplifier needs negative feedback. There the phase angle between portion of output feeding back to input will be 180 degree. That is for amplifier. Amplifier needs a negative feedback which reduces gain but increases gain stability okay but positive feedback increases gain we need a large gain for an oscillator rather than a gain stability so answer feeding back a portion of output into input so correct answer is option b sinusoidal wave given Amplitude modulated by another sinusoidal wave, the second wave. We know second wave has frequency 1000 pi, omega 1000 pi. First wave having frequency 10 into 10 power 6 pi. So, the first given wave should be the carrier one. Second one is the signal. So, second one given is signal. Amplitude of minimum frequency component of modulated wave. Amplitude of minimum frequency component or amplitude of maximum frequency component is mu times mu times AC divided by 2. Where AC is the carrier amplitude, mu is the modulation index. This is the required answer. Where modulation index mu is equal to AM divided by AC where AM is the amplitude of the modulating signal, baseband signal, AC is the amplitude of the carrier, AM, signal amplitude, signal is the second one, so 20, AC, carrier amplitude given 40, that is 1 by 2, then we can 1 by 2 into AC, AC, carrier amplitude, which is carrier amplitude 40 divided by 2 mu itself is 1 by 2. So, 40 by 4 that is 10 is the right answer. Next, section B we start 21 numericals. Ball projected vertically upward with initial velocity 50 meter per second at t equal to 0. At t equal to 2 second another body projected upward with same velocity. At what time second ball meets the first ball? Second ball meets first ball at what time? First body projected upward, 
second body is also projected upward initially with same speed both bolts meet at same position that's one of the concept the location is same so the displacement of each of that bolts will be same when they meet their position vectors are same when they meet that's first thought applying the first kinematic equation ut plus half at square we can make use of h is the displacement or height where they meet equal to ut plus half at square u is plus 50 let that time where it the first bolt meets the second bolt first bolt meets the second bolt be t t is the time after which first bolt meets second bolt in air that is t is the flight time of first bolt in air just up to which they meet plus half a t square g is given 10 so acceleration due to gravity as per Cartesian convention is to be given downward so minus minus half into 10 into t square half into 10 becomes 5 into t square that's going to be the first equation for second equation second ball is also having same displacement same initial velocity but it gets time uh, short by 2 seconds because after 2 seconds only another body projected so its time is t minus 2 minus g same for that one also minus 5 into t minus 2 all square let us solve this that is 50 t minus 100 minus 5 into t square minus 40 plus 4 that implies 50 t minus 100 minus 5 t square plus 20 t minus 20 these two heights are to be same from each of these equations positions are same equate these two that is 50 t minus 5 t square equals 50 t minus 120 minus 100 minus 20 minus 120 minus 5 t square plus 20 so this 5t square can be eliminated as both are minus 5t square. This 50t can be eliminated from both sides. That is 120 is equal to 20t. So t is equal to 12 by 2. That is 6. So correct answer is 6. 6 seconds. Next one. 22. Batsman hits back a ball of mass 0.4 kilogram straight in direction of the bowler without changing initial speed. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. Final momentum minus initial momentum. Final momentum is M into V final minus M, uh, initial momentum is M into V initial. That is M into V final minus V initial. That is M into V final is minus V minus V initial is V. Because speed remains same it is given so impulse is equal to 0 0.4 into minus 2v 2 into v given 15 so 15 into 0.4 is 6 6 into 2 is 12 so minus 12 only in we need 12 numerical so correct answer is 12 22nd one is over 23rd one a system 10 bolts each 2 kilogram connected via massless unstretchable string. System is allowed to slip over the edge of the smooth table as shown. Tension in string between 7th and 8th bolts. Between 7th and 8th bolts. So this is the first bolt, first bolt, second bolt, third bolt, fourth bolt, fifth bolt. When sixth bolt is just leaving the table. So sixth bolt is also here. So, how many bolts are there in air hanging? There are 6 bolts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 bolts are hanging in air. Then, what is the acceleration of the system? Acceleration of the system is equal to net force by mass. Net force hanging. What is the hanging net force as the table is smooth? Table is smooth. There is no constrained force, only other than normal force. Normal force is a constrained force. Here friction is not there. So the weight and balanced force is weight of the hanging part of the bolts. Six bolts are hanging. So 6 mg is the weight of hanging part divided by total mass of the system which are accelerating. Total mass of bolts are 10 m. So acceleration of the system is 
टू बाई फाइव जी सॉरी थ्री बाई फाइव जी थ्री बाई फाइव जी तो थ्री बाई फाइव जी इज द एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ द सिस्टम एट दैट इंस्टेंट एक्सेलरेशन इज नॉट ए कॉन्स्टेंट बिकॉज आज इट फॉल्स डाउन मोर एंड मोर बॉल्स अपियर इन द हैंगिंग पार्ट okay but total mass tandem remaining constant hanging weight increases so acceleration increases gradually here at this moment when sixth ball just leaves six balls are hanging then acceleration is 3 by 5g now tension in balls connecting between 7 and 8 so this is the seventh one and this is eighth so this point we have to find tension okay The seventh and eighth. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Then in this picture we eliminate all these three. Only ten balls are there given. Okay. So tension between that is equal to mass behind into acceleration. Mass behind how much? How many are there? One, two, three. So three m's are there. Mass behind into acceleration. Acceleration three by five g. At that instant, all the bodies will have same acceleration. at the next instant acceleration is greater than this but that will be same at that instant for all balls this uh, m is 2 kg g is given 10 let us choose g as 10 so this one will be 5 2 3 into 3 3 3 9 so the correct answer is 36 is the right answer 24th one a geyser heats water flowing at a rate 2 kg per minute from 30 to 70 degree geyser operates on a burner rate of combustion of fuel is rate of combustion of fuel is equal to rate of combustion of gas or fuel to be found in gram per minute okay we may get that in kilogram per minute as per data we can convert is equal to heat per minute divided by heat of combustion heat per minute heat per minute divided by heat of combustion that's a formula what is heat per minute heat per minute is ms delta theta m s delta theta divided by heat of combustion heat of combustion is given here m is given to specific heat capacity given 4.2 joule per gram converting into si 1000 multiplied by 1000 delta theta is 40 degree 70 minus 30 divided by heat of combustion is given 8 into 10 power 3 8 into 10 power 3 is joule per gram per kilogram it should be 8 into 10 power 6 one more thousand there okay this one 40 into 2 will be 80 and that 8 gets cancelled here one of the thousand gets cancelled now this will become 42 the correct answer is option a 42 because needed is per gram per minute this is kilogram per minute for converting into gram per minute okay calculation you get answer 42 next one heat engine operates with cold reservoir temperature given cold reservoir temperature is t2 minimum temperature of hot reservoir engine takes 300 joule heat from hot reservoir heat absorbed from hot reservoir q1 delivers 180 joule heat at cold reservoir heat rejected at cold reservoir q2 then Q1 by Q2 equals T1 by T2. Okay, we need then T1. T1 is equal to T2 324 into Q1 300 divided by Q2. Q2 is 180. Okay, you calculate and answer. You will get 540. Next one.
next one 26 a set of 20 tuning forks arranged in series of increasing frequencies each fork gives four beats with respect to the preceding fork and frequency of last fork is twice the frequency of the first then frequency of the last fork is first fork frequency say f for beat producing beats the difference should be four next should be next one should have frequency either f plus four or f minus four but the last fork has twice the frequency the next should be f plus 4 let me write it f plus 1 into 4 next f plus 2 into 4 etc f plus how many forks are there 20 then you choose only 19 times 4 because this is to be included then only it should be 20 and this is that order and frequency of the last fork will be f plus 19 into 4 we do not know f this is the answer we do not know f but given that that is equal to twice the frequency of first four it is given as per the data question so 2f minus f is f so f is equal to what f is equal to 19 multiplied by 4 that is 119 multiplied by 4 how much 100 is not 76 76 but answer is not 76 because frequency of the last fork is asked frequency of the last fork is two times the first fork first fork 76 last fork 2f that is 76 times 2 that is 152 so the right answer is option 152 next one Two 10 centimeter long straight wires each carrying current 5 ampere kept parallel to each other. If each wire experiences 10 power minus 5 Newton, then separation between the wires is holes per unit length. Holes per unit length is equal to mu naught I1 I2 divided by 2 pi d. That's a formula used between parallel currents, force, magnetic force between parallel currents. Here separation is asked, only direct substitution. Here force is given 10 power minus 5, length, force per length, 10 centimeter. That is 10 into 10 power minus 2, mu 0 by 2 pi. Mu 0 itself is 4 pi into 10 power minus 7. That you get 2 into 10 power minus 7. I1 and I2 are 5 ampere divided by D. Okay, you try to find out D. Then you get the answer 5 28th one. A small bulb is placed at the bottom of tank water to depth root 7 meter. Refractive index of water 4 by 3. Area of the surface of water through which light from the bulb can emerge is x pi meter square. Then value of x is let this be the depth. Depth. And the light coming from the point source of light describes a circular patch of light at the surface. And condition 4, light to grace the boundary of air-water interface is the angle, should be critical angle. That angle should be critical angle. Light is now traveling from denser, that is water, to air. Denser to rarer. Angle of incident in denser medium is equal to critical angle, then light grazes. Now, if this angle is greater, if that angle coming from the light source is greater than critical angle, that point may lie here. Then light, that light will not go out. So, it is asked this, what is the area of this space? Then let this be the radius R. Then let us find out what is sin C from the figure. Let this depth H or D depth sin C is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is root of R square plus D square. But sin C is equal to 1 by refractive index of 
denser medium with respect to rarer medium that you can find out r square by r square plus d square equal to 1 by mu square that is mu square is equal to 1 plus d square by r square that is d square by r square is equal to mu square minus 1 that is r square is equal to d square divided by mu square minus 1 so area area which is pi r square pi r square is equal to pi into d square divided by mu square minus 1 now only substitution that is pi times what is depth square depth square is root 7 square that is 7 divided by mu square minus 1 mu square is 16 by 9 16 by 9 minus 1 let me write it making little room here so pi r square is equal to 7 pi divided by this will be 16 minus 9 7 divided by 9 so gets cancelled so answer is 9 9 so that right answer is 9 next traveling microscope is used to determine refractive index of glass lab 40 divisions are there in 1 centimeter on main scale 40 divisions are there in 1 centimeter on main scale and 50 vernier scale divisions are equal to 49 main scale divisions least count least count is equal to 1 msd main scale division minus 1 vernier scale division what is 1 msd see 40 divisions 40 main scale divisions correspond to 1 centimeter that means in 1 centi 1 centimeter is divided into 40 small divisions so what is 1 msd 1 msd is equal to 1 by 40 centimeter so this will be 1 by 40 centimeter minus what is one vernier scale division 49 main scale divisions uh, coincide with 50 vernier scale divisions so 50 vernier scale division coincide with 49 main scale division so one vernier scale division means 49 divided by 50 msd okay so minus we can substitute that 49 divided by 50 into what is one msd 1 msd is 1 by 40 so 1 by 40 centimeter minus 49 by 50 into 1 by 40 that is 1 by 40 into 1 minus 49 by 50 that is 1 by 40 into 50 minus 49 is what 1 by 50 that implies 1 by how much 20 double zero 1 by 2000 1 by 2000 what is the unit centimeter that is that much centimeter 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 0 0.5 into 10 power minus 3 centimeter that is 0 0.5 into 10 power minus 5 meter that is 5 into 10 power minus 6 meter that is answer 5 correct answer is option answer 5 then the last one stopping potential for photo electrons emitted by surface illuminated by light of wavelength given so incident wavelength given stopping potential given threshold frequency is also given then what is the value of x x is mentioned as threshold frequency einstein's photo electric equation this is the same equation is applied twice in the same paper Einstein's equation hc by lambda minus phi 0 phi 0 is h nu 0 hc by lambda minus h nu 0 is equal to maximum kinetic energy maximum kinetic energy is equal to ev 0 where v 0 is the stopping potential so here h you can take common c by lambda minus nu 0 equal to ev 0 h 6.63 given 10 power minus 34 into 3 into 10 power 8 divided by lambda 6630 10 power minus 10 minus nu 0 is equal to charge on electron 1.6 10 power minus 19 stopping potential is 0 0.42 
only the unknown variable is nu0 you try to calculate and get the answer 35 okay with that we finish uh, g 26th june attempt evening session physics part thank you thank you